but here we are on the eve of another major Champions Week. For yourself, how are we feeling? Uh, excited. I think it's kind of a weird one this, this late in the year, but um, myself and Rab are, uh, are known for racing really late in the year, so it's, I think we're kind of more prepared than anybody else. You mentioned here in Dubai, a place which holds a little bit of mixed memories for yourself, but um, yeah. what's this week been like? Hot. Damn hot. Um, it's been amazing. Like To just be out here, the facilities are incredible. Um, to just be uh, in an, such a, an elite performance-based place, like the, the facilities here, make you raise your game you kind of when you have everything on your doorstep you kind of just have to reach that level so and when you're surrounded by all these elite athletes at british athletics it kind of it drags you up yeah so as soon as you kind of come together again for another major championships you get that that feeling of the medals are about to come and the great performances are about to be drawn out of each other i guess yeah 100 percent. when you see the athletes that are here as well like a, a lot of people have come here and taken advantage of the opportunity to be in dubai so to be around the likes of dina and you've got all the four by one guys here and stuff is it's uh you kind of, um, even in my old age, I still kind of enjoy being around those kind of guys and that still gives me a buzz. And tell me about this 4x4 squad, back-to-back -back World Championship bronzes. What mm -hmm. can we expect this year? Hopefully another medal. Probably uh, one of our, it's hard to say because it's so late in the season, but I think we've got quite a strong squad because I think we're coming through at the right time. Um, and it's just going to be very competitive. The 4x4, men's 4x4 is always competitive. as 12 teams that can always medal. So. Um, we, uh, we're going to be in the mix and hopefully uh, come away with some more silverware. Yeah, you've seen a few come and go. Who are, the, who are the sort of the key contributors in this team and that bring different things to, to knit into a good whole? Um, I think Rabbi Yusuf is someone um, we've been through. Well, we, we started racing when we were kids, uh, when we were juniors and stuff, so we bring a lot of experience. And then there's some young talent, like you've got young people like Toby Harris and, and Lee Thompson who are they're new to the squad but also bring a different dynamic. They've come from different multi sport backgrounds and they're having a a track awareness uh, that maybe not everybody else has because they've come and played rugby or football and uh, I think that's uh, a massive skill that we need. And all guided by Uncle Rooney. Yeah, Uncle it. Rooney, yeah, I'm, I'm an uncle, that's the stage I'm at now, like it's not dad obviously but it's like, and I ha thankfully it's not granddad so it's Uncle Rooney, I'll take that. Yeah, and joking aside, a senior role in that group, kind of just some of the younger guys just giving them a bit of a you know, sort of boost and how do you see that? Role? Yeah, I think I've embraced that, I've, it's something that I've kind of been the old boy for a while now. Um, so I kind of know my role. I, I'm I'm here to help as many people as possible. I'm trying to set up as many opportunities for the younger younger athletes to speak to senior athletes, and even the senior athletes if they need some help or guidance or whatever. So um, it's something that I thrive upon. I, I love the I love to feel needed. <laughs> so you know, it's kind of like uh, it's the crux of the matter. yeah, no, no, it's, it's it's been brilliant for me, and like uh, I've enjoyed trying to pass on some knowledge to some people. So. That's not always a natural dynamic, is it? Some of the new new kids on the block tend to stay together, and some of the older athletes. So, so in a sense, you kind of almost need to, to engineer those situations. Yeah, it's it's quite easy to do when you're on these camps because we're all eating around the same time. It's just myself and I keep talking about Rabba, but we've engineered ourselves, so we're putting ourselves on tables where we're not normally sitting with those people, and we're having a good conversation and just letting them ask questions if they want. And society, everyone has Google on their hand, uh, in their hand, and they can. They know everything, but they don't understand anything. So we're kind of trying to fill that, that gap. You, know, so. you don't have to do that, do you? Is it something that you choose to do for why? I think a lot of British athletes, uh, senior athletes have always done it. Like I've been very fortunate to have uh, retired athletes who will be more than willing to pick up the phone and like, have a conversation with. So I feel it's my duty as a senior boy to kind of go, if you need any help, I'm here to help. And um, I think like we're, in a, we're a small nation and um, we've got a lot of history and stuff, so if we can pass on as much as we can, that's, that's what we're here for. Particularly in relays, an event that's dominated by certain countries over a period of time, do you think really rallying together to, to sort of break that dominance is a little bit the way to go, and in a sense, a kind of bit of a siege mentality? It's definitely us against the world, like the world champs, but um, I feel that um, we, we're, as, as a nation, we're feared. A lot of countries are scared to race us, and they try... Like we've had it in other championships where they've gone out of the way to, it, instead of their own race plan, they've gone to try and beat our race plan. Um, so that's quite a nice, powerful position to be in. We're kind of like the Man United, well, old Man United, not the new Man United. But um, <laughs> we're kind of in that position, and I think like, we're trying to challenge like, like, um, the best, best nations in the world, and we're fairly successful at it. It's kind of the ultimate compliment, I guess. We would have been changing for them a little bit a few mm. years ago. So, so it kind of shows that we're sort of Britain are in the driving seat when it comes to passing that back. Yeah, well, we, ha we have adapted. Like, um, for a long time, we were first leg, last leg, two main runners, whereas now it's first and second leg, and then kind of everybody else kind of fills in the gaps and um, 
Like uh, that's something we had to adapt to, and now we're putting ourselves in the right position to actually win medals rather than come home at teams. So it's um, it's worked so far. Uh, Nick Dakin has taken over the relay program for the four x four, and he seems to have got quite a lot of success out of it. So it's been brilliant. Simon, you just touch on that race process, the anchor leg again, your speciality. Mm -hmm. What did it take to run a good anchor leg? And I guess you've got it down over the years. Big dick energy. <laughs> 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 okay, what's it take to be uh, a good anchor leg runner? I think it's uh, patience, awareness, um, and trust in your own ability. I think you have to be able to say, like, look, I can make a move here or I can let somebody else. One thing I, I'm trying to pass on to the younger guys is, like, don't be scared to know what's going on around you. In the 400, you have to be focused on your own lane, your own event, but in the relay, it's a completely different environment. And um, guys who come from multi-sport backgrounds, I think they're naturally better at last legs. So.